Welcome to Histrionics, incredible tales from before the now. My name is King Henry VIII. I am, I am, and I'm here to tell you lot about a party, the best party ever, 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 and you can all come, you're all invited. <laughs> well, you would be all invited if the party hadn't actually ended 500 years ago. Oh, it was the best party ever, known as the Tournament of the Field of the Cloth of Gold. I know, I know, I know. Not the best name, is it? There's loads of ofs and thes in the Tournament of the Field of the Cloth of Gold. It's not as memorable a name for a party as Glastonbury or Wacky Warehouse, but it was still the greatest party the world had ever seen. So, it had been tradition for, well, centuries, for the English king, if there was a new one, to take an army into France. We would knock about for a bit, have a massive war, seem to be doing really well at the start, and then eventually get defeated and have to run away, having spent loads of money for nothing, and loads of our soldiers would be dead. A lot of my advisers said, right, right, we've had enough of this, this keeps happening all the time, enough, we're spending far too much money, and everybody ends up dead, and we don't get anything, let's stop. Now I said, whoa, ho, 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 tradition, it is the job of an English king to make war upon the French. My chief advisor, Cardinal Walsley, said, um, no, no, I don't think so. I think we'll try doing something different, your majesty. How about, um, being nice to them? Being their friend? Friends? Friends? With the French? Are you mad? What possible benefit could there be in this? Thomas Walsh said, well, um, after you've made friends with them and signed a treaty, we'll call it uh, the Treaty of Universal Peace, you can have a party to celebrate. A massive party. Massive? Massive party, you say? Oh, oh, I do like my massive parties. Right, so, um, what we have to do is have an enormous amount of food and drink and guests. But not just that. Oh, no, we have to have sporting events as well. There can be archery and wrestling, oh, armoured foot combat, where two knights fight with double-handed swords over a wooden fence like very angry but well-equipped farmers. Um, we also need to have horseback events too. We can have jousting. Now, if you don't know what jousting is, it's where two men-at-arms or knights fully armoured on horseback ride at each other. Both of them, of course, equipped with lances, and the idea is to knock the other one off the horse or score points by hitting them in certain areas. A highly skillful pursuit which takes years of practice. And then the other horse event can be the melee, which is a bit like the joust, except instead of um, losing lots of skill, we all just get on a horse and charge at each other and hit one another with swords and sticks. Yeah. It's what it lacks in skill it makes up for in enthusiasm, which, of course... The English have the best of. So, we spoke to the King of France, Francois I, and he said, ah, Yes, I agree. This sounds like a very good idea. Let's do it. Let us have the tournament of the field of the cloth of gold. So, at the end of May, 1520, I got some guests together. My wife, Queen Catherine, obviously, and just a few, just a few of my close personal friends, around about uh, 6,000 of them, and we made our journey to the coast in England and then sailed to France, as I believe is traditional. Now, I've told you why it is it's called the Tournament of the Field of the Cloth of Gold, or at least I've explained the tournament bit, but what's the cloth of gold, you ask? Well, it's literally cloth of gold. It's cloth that has actual gold thread woven into it. Combined with silver, it's very expensive, and it makes the cloth glitter and shine. The French, when we arrived, thought we were wearing armour. We were so shiny. And they actually held back from the field, waiting for us to arrive, because they actually believed we were going to secretly attack them. Which, of course, we weren't, because you can't secretly attack anybody if there's 6,000 of you wearing glittering cloth of gold suits. I, of course, wasn't the first of the English to arrive. We'd sent tradesmen and sewers and the like ahead of us, and they'd constructed huge panoply of tents out of cloth of gold. It was like looking on a small town. There were huge tents made to look like palaces and castles. My one had bricks on the bottom, actual canvas sewn to look like bricks, and then windows in it as well. We even had oil cloth at the top to look like lead on the roof. We had so many glorious things. The French had tried to outdo us, of course, by building a 150-foot gold tent, 
which they then opened at the front and it blew down in the wind. <laughs> oh, I laughed so much that my eyes fell out. Well, nearly. And then at 6 p.m. on the 7th of June, 1520, I met the King of France. We shook hands and went inside one of the other gold tents and thus began 18 days of party, 18 days of competition, 18 days of fighting and celebration. Oh, it was wonderful. Um, in the jousting, I saw that the King of France got a bloody nose and a black eye. In the melee, I managed to accidentally damage the shoulder pieces of the Marshal of France's armour and had to replace it for him, of course, as only polite. And then it did rain on some of the days as well. So we did other things instead, like wrestling two French priests challenged some Cornish men to the wrestling, and after I'd seen them, I became so enthused that I tapped the King of France upon the shoulder and said, Francois, let's do that as well. Let's fight. He said, those are fatting words. And we wrestled, and then he stuck out his leg and tripped me over. I fell onto the ground and hit it with my amazing face. Tripping? I was furious. Tripping is not allowed in English wrestling. Whatever will they do next in wrestling rules, I ask you? Hitting each other with folding chairs? <laughs> uh, nonetheless, following after that, I challenged the king to a longbow competition with some archery. He couldn't even pull my bow back further than his own ears. Ha ha ha! Of course, it wasn't just old sport, wrestling and archery and jousting. No, 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 no. It was also eating and drinking. Oh, yes. We got through around about 200,000 litres of wine, some of which I pumped through a massive fountain in the centre of the area, and very nearly 70,000 litres of beer and 2,000 sheep. Not, not all in one go. That wasn't just one meal. It wasn't 2,000 sheep down in one. That's not, that's not what we were doing. Oh, what a great celebration. On the last day, Cardinal Worsley landed a mass with everybody, and we saw a dragon in the sky. Not a real one, though. Obviously, it was a kite. A huge dragon kite bedecked with exploding fireworks to make it look like it was breathing flame. And then, after 18 days, we left, knowing... That the treaty of universal peace between France and England would be observed for not very long, as certainly within at least a year, many of us were actually at war and fighting each other again. Hmm. Still, great party, party time, party on, oh yeah! Now, thanks very much for listening to me. I'm obviously the king, so I have very important duties. But if you've been listening to this and being excited about it, maybe you could do drawings at home. Maybe you could design your own tents made out of different material. What kind of sporting events would you have at your tournament if you were to have a massive party? And how would you decide who wins? Thank you very much for listening to me there and our History Onyx video. I have been Henry VIII. I have. I have. Thanks for watching. And, uh... Stay safe.